In 2020, for the first time since 1980, vinyl sales outperformed CD sales at nearly double. There is just something tactile about vinyl. You can get it online, but there is nothing more satisfying than physically going to a record store. There are thousands of record stores across the country, and we will be traveling to several other cities in the future as well. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. We are starting our journey in Nashville, Tennessee, where we visit almost every record shop in the area for our series Hi-Fi America. This video documents these stores as they were in August of 2020. If you want to see individual store videos, they will be linked below. We started our trip traveling from Baltimore. This was the first time we flew since the 2020 lockdowns, so we did not know what to expect. Once we got into Nashville, we had just enough time to stop and eat before heading to our first record shop. So we visited the Americana Tap House to grab some Nashville hot chicken bites and street tacos. We love this restaurant because their ambiance is a classic American feel almost like being on Route 66. After eating, we headed over to the factory, home of Luna Records. Shop. Luna Record Shop opened in 2015, initially as an online store. Uh, that same year, Calvert and Brenna Gentry opened up the brick and mortar in the factory here. And here we are, that's the story. I've been here off and on for two years, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. My entire family was very musical. Grandfather played guitar. I think my first record was uh, Physical Graffiti by Led Zeppelin. So I was always just kind of around it, flipping records when I was 10, 11 years old, that kind of thing. I think the specialty of the shop, just what they care most about, closest to their heart, is going to be alt 80s, 90s rock, Sisters of Mercy, sort of New Order, that sort of thing. So yeah, we do pretty much anything you would want, music related, cassettes, CDs, posters, tour books. We've got candles, we've got magnets, we've got patches and stickers, so pretty much if you're looking for something with a band name on it, then you're pretty golden here. So Luna Record Shop is a woman-based record shop, and that's actually pretty rare in the record shop world. So it's an awesome shop, and the two ladies that run it are sisters and do a really good job. So if you like their store and want to pick up a t-shirt, they have those readily available, along with some other really cool merchandise. Got our punk and metal section here. As you can see, it goes pretty quickly, usually. <laughs> the piece de resistance, the Lunar Lounge, back before the COVID stuff happened, this is where everybody would come in, kind of listen to music and kind of hang out in the mall kind of thing. So it's cool while people are shopping or somewhere for everybody to sit out and hang out. We also do some shows in here occasionally. Jeremy Enoch from Sunny Day Real Estate did an acoustic set in here. That was really cool. Uh, Matt Talbot from Hum came in and did a cool setup with like a tape delay. It was pretty sweet. Uh, there's been a few other people too, so that's kind of a get for us here as well. So we've got our cassettes here. Pretty heavy metal alternative. 80s and 90s galore pretty much. Anything you could want as far as that goes. So yeah, we've got hip hop and soundtracks here. New and used in both, obviously. Um, classic hip hop, newer hip hop, same for the soundtracks. Represses of older soundtracks, that sort of thing, you know, record store stuff. <laughs> got some box sets here. Uh, we've got, we sell some cool, uh, like mixtape cassettes too, that people tend to enjoy. This one guy, we bought a bunch of cool old punk t-shirts and uh, a lot of, you know, uh, Mother Love Bone cassettes and stuff like that, he all sorts of stuff. So this was stuff that he actually made himself when he was working for some of these bands. So it's kind of cool to listen to what he was listening to at the time. We've got pint glasses for the alcoholics and coffee for everybody that's not. A few turntables here, we do receivers. Not a ton of vintage gear, but we do get some occasionally. So they have an awesome rare vinyl section. So whether you're looking for Japanese presses or that Blink-182 album that you can't find anywhere else, they have records here that are just incredible and highly collectible. There's all sorts of stuff, especially here recently. So we've been closed down, buying a lot of stuff online and that sort of thing. So 
really kind of pumping that up. And there's everything from Slipknot to Japanese kiss presses and everything in there, so it's pretty cool Worth checking out. Uh, the Funk and Soul, some of my favorite stuff. Try to make sure there's a lot of prints in there, who is my favorite, I would say. So one really cool thing about Luna Records is they specialize in that 90s alternative rock and classic rock that a lot of record stores just don't have a good enough selection of. So it's music that I'm really into. So when I came in here, I just recognized it right away that they have such a good selection of that alternative and classic rock. Whether you're looking for hard to find presses or just that 80, 90s alternative used vinyl or new vinyl, you're gonna find a really, really good, ever-changing selection here at Luna Records. And these are kind of the owner's pride possession here, I guess, the collection of 80s and 90s, all just like the Funk and the Soul. We've got the new and the pre-owned. Massive stuff that I've never even heard of that they both love. <laughs> Brings us to indie and pop, rock. Oh, on the wall, that's cool. This is some more of our sort of collectible stuff, so the more high ticket items. Got our new selection that starts here, uh, followed soon by our pre-owned collection, which extends from here all the way over to here and further down, A to Z. We sell a lot of classic rock in Franklin, Tennessee. Big fans. We also sell a lot of classic country, as you could probably imagine, Nashville being the country music capital of the world. Uh, right next to the country, we've got our bluegrass stuff. Um, after that, we kind of smaller genres that we don't necessarily have a ton of at the moment, but they're represented at least. So electro, blues, reggae, classical, vocal stuff, followed by a jazz collection here. Another big spot people like to check out is our Third Man Records selection. Pretty good friends with the Third Man guys. We've done events there and you know they kind of hook us up with color variants and that sort of thing on certain releases. Our new arrivals bin. This is everything that we clean, which we do do that. We VPI clean and play grade everything, every used record before we put it out. So when it comes off the VPI machine, it comes to this crate and that's where everyone can find the newest things. So basically you just, we've got a solution that we concoct ourselves lather the record up really well and then it's vacuum powered so it gets all the excess liquid off then you've got a clean record uh, from there we actually put it on the turd table and any sort of mark or scratch or divot or whatever it is we play grade all of it and that's how we make the grade and how we determine the price and everything as well so our hands go on every record, essentially, before we put them out. It's all sealed up and everything, and they can check the grading on the back. So yeah. our usual customers, they really enjoy the fact that they can just sort of trust us and not have to really look at it under light and everything. So that helps. Uh, we do special order for stuff um, for people if we don't have something in the shop specifically that they want. So yeah, if somebody's looking for something, then they can come get it and we can find it for them pretty easily. So if you're in Franklin, Tennessee, or Nashville and want to take a short drive, this is a great record store to come to. Luna Records is really cool. They have a constant change of variety of records in their shop. So it's always gonna be something different and it's really clean and easy to shop. So we definitely encourage you to come check out Luna Records. After finishing up at Luna Records, we headed back to East Nashville to take our tour of the groove where we were in a time crunch because there was a storm headed our way and we needed to finish filming before it poured. So welcome to The Groove. My name is Michael. The Groove started in 2007. The current owners, uh, Michael Combs and Jesse Cartwright, took over in 2017 uh, with an emphasis on really making a welcome environment for everybody. Uh, the motto here at The Groove is music for everybody. I've been with The Groove, uh, working on various things for about a year now. Um, it all started with Spooky Ghoul Fest, uh, our October event that we do last year. How I got into vinyl, I just started collecting. I think they're my dad's stuff. They were kind of passed on to me and then I just started to grow my collection. and. Um, found myself here one day and uh, extremely lucky to have uh, this shop and all the other great record stores in town here. As far as I know, the building was commercialized sometime several decades ago, but that's all I really know about the building. It's got a really creepy basement, I know that. 
So when you come into the groove, you're greeted by the new releases and just a ton of vinyl throughout the whole shop. So they specialize in pop rock. They specialize in country. It's Tennessee, of course they have that. They have plenty of soundtracks, horror soundtracks, uh, you name it. They specialize in a lot of different things that other shops may not. They even have local band records. So just something cool that you won't see everywhere else. So what we try and do here is strike a good balance between new vinyl and used vinyl. Um, some of our specialties here are we definitely specialize in the local artists here in Nashville. Um, we have a very good selection of uh, anyone you want from Music City here. Another one of our specialties, uh, you probably won't find another record store in town with quite as good as a selection of soundtracks as we have, uh, particularly horror soundtracks. Uh, everyone here are big horror buffs, big horror fans. Uh, the Invisible Man. Uh, we also specialize in Waxworks, uh, which is a, a label, uh, another horror gem. Um, you've got Bride of Reanimator here, uh, Friday the 13th, Part 5, Jason Lives, Part 6, Jason Lives. Uh, come further down here, you got the wall of all the used goods here. Um, over here we've got our country and western section, again, here in Nashville. Uh, we like to offer a big selection uh, for all the locals, anyone coming through town. Um, this is just our general used pop and rock section. Uh, we like to keep a healthy stock here. Coming down here, you've got your jazz section. We've got new, used. Um, we've got your new and used folk. Uh, down here, we've got your new and used funk, soul, and R&B. Over here, we have a special little section for hip hop. Over here, we're gonna have our electronic section, which is another uh, specialty section that we, we try to stock as well. Come over here. You've got the new release wall. Every Friday gets updated. Um, we've got everything from national, international to regional to local. Liza Ann's here is a, uh, a local Nashville artist. Uh, her new album came out this past Friday. And then over here, um, we just have our selection of uh, new vinyl, new pop, new rock. We've got the listening station here, so if something out here catches your eye, piques your interest, just bring it over here, throw it on, throw it on the headphones, see how it sounds. Hopefully it sounds good and you take it home with you. They also feature a ever-changing large quantity of cassettes. We have our cassette tape selection. Um, we do stock new release cassettes as well as used cassettes. Um, so this is always rotating in and out. So the Groove has a huge selection of CDs, probably more than most record shops that I've seen. So if you like CDs, you can probably find anything you're looking for at the Groove. So over here, we have our new CD section. Uh, we've got new up here, we've got used. Um, we still stock a healthy amount of uh, all new releases on CD. Um, and then also have quite a good offering here of used CDs. We do have a, uh, a comic book store here. These are all independent artists and independent books that we sell. It's called Wake Up Comics. Super proud to have these guys with us here. Over here, we've got our seven inches. Uh, again, always try and keep this stocked, new and used. Um, a lot of Record Store Day releases, a lot of good stuff in there. And then we've got the stage back here, uh, which we host uh, local, regional, uh, touring musicians here, small intimate shows, uh, CD releases, all that kinds of good stuff. So the Groove has signings and even intimate performances from many local bands here inside and on their outdoor stage. So we have local shows throughout the year. Um, no really rhyme or reason, just book stuff as it comes. Our three big ones are uh, in April, we do Record Store Day, which is a huge event for all of East Nashville. We usually have about five or six local bands, uh, draws a really big crowd. In uh, August, or I'm sorry, September, we do Americana Fest as well. Um, work with a couple different record labels, uh, local labels here for that. And then in October, we do uh, Spooky Ghoul Fest, which is a spooky Halloween marketplace with different artists and uh, then about five or six different bands and uh, the Spooky Ghoul Band headlines, which is uh, masked and cloaked ghouls playing your Halloween favorites. Uh, and then also back here throughout the summer, we'll do movie nights. We'll set up a projector, a big screen there. And then every Friday night in October, we'll do Fright Night Fridays, a different horror movie, uh, every Friday night, all free. Um, and usually bring out a pretty good crowd. So I bet you're wondering, what am I doing under this tree? 
Well, the group has peach trees and pear trees outside their shop for their customers to pick out of free of charge. The peach trees, yeah, really started to come in the last couple of weeks here. Uh, and this was the first weekend where we had a lot of people come out uh, and take down peaches and we have pears over here as well. All free, yep, yeah, put up a, throw up a post on Instagram. Anybody that wants to come get your peaches. So the mural uh, was painted by a couple of local artists two years ago, uh, Dakota Jernigan and another artist called Art Barfer. Uh, they were commissioned by Michael and Jesse, the owners of the store here. Uh, they wanted to get some really kind of eye-popping visuals for the, uh, the front of the store here. Um, everything's in chronological order. Um, you start with Charles Mingus here. Um, you work your way through the decades. You got Captain Beefheart, King Crimson. Uh, you got Stevie Wonder. And then you come over to the other side here, you got ELO, Prince, uh, the In Utero Nirvana cover, got some Pink Floyd, and then uh, come all the way down to the end here, uh, ends with David Bowie's Black Star. Over here we really try to keep our Halloween and Christmas selections up to date and always stocked. Christmas and Halloween are two big things at the store here. We'll really go all out and really decorate the place, um, especially for Halloween. Um, so that's a really cool vibe because it's like you're stepping into an old haunted house that's a record store. It's really cool. Also being big horror fans here too, we also like to carry um, horror merchandise. We do have some buttons here and pins from Graveface. Uh, some pretty cool horror stuff. We got some Freddy Krueger, a scream button. My personal favorite, which I just bought, are the, the Surreal Monsters, uh, Count Chocula, Boo Berry, and Frankenberry. Um, but yeah, and then we also got some, some band buttons here. Again, we're big Halloween and horror people here, so we've got some Friday the 13th and Texas Chainsaw playing cards. And then, being a record store, we also do sell turntables and uh, unique pieces of audio equipment here. Here we have some sort of vintage reel-to-reel. -reel. This is usually full, this whole wall is usually full of show posters, but given the current state of things, it's quite empty and quite depressing to look at. But you can still come in here, still get your, your fix here, still get your taste here. Since we're in Nashville, we do get a lot of national artists who will come in through town when they're in town will come through. Um, or, you know, it's pretty common just to see the local musicians pop in here and there, um, which is pretty cool. Even though we made it to the groove before the rain, now we've been caught in a flash flood on the way to drop off our luggage before dinner. Finally getting some time to eat, we decided to try more Nashville hot chicken and barbecue at Edley's. With day one in the books, we are currently headed three hours from Nashville to Memphis. We first stopped in Memphis to tour the legendary Sun Studio, which was Cole's favorite place on our tour.
Mr. Sun Studio, we headed to the premier music store in Memphis, Martin's Music. again as it seems to do every afternoon in Tennessee. And we are headed to Shangri-La Records, which is the longest running record shop in Memphis. Shangri-La is a massive store with a huge deep history in Memphis music. So I'm going to hand it over to John Miller and he's going to tell you a little bit about the history of Memphis music and about this awesome record shop. Hi, welcome to Shangri-La Records in Memphis, Tennessee. My name is John Miller. I'm one of the owners here, uh, along with Jared McStay. Uh, our shop was founded uh, 30 years ago by uh, Sherman Wilmot. Uh, has been in the same location ever since. Uh, so the store actually started uh, before it was a record shop as a place with uh, flotation tanks where you could get brain tune-ups. So you can see there's uh, the shop in the early days, uh, Sherman uh, and Eric uh, with the therapeutic massage and uh, flotation tanks. And uh, it was at that point that he brought in Eric Friedel, uh, who's gone on to uh, fame in the Oblivions and is also co-founder and owner of Garner Records Crosstown uh, to help really set up the record side of things. Uh, from there, we've grown. Uh, the store has seen label uh, attached to it that had bands such as uh, the Grifters, Strapping Field Hands uh, attached, and uh, Grifters eventually went on to sign with Sub Pop. As I mentioned, Sherman started up uh, the label. Uh, we've got compilation from the first 10 years. And as you can see, the store wasn't much to look at uh, at the beginning, but has really grown since then. So uh, there's great history here with the store, um, not just the physical location, but uh, a lot of uh, different ways in which it's been involved in the community. In addition to uh, the label, Sherman also has uh, a thing called Shangri-La Projects, and that's been responsible for putting out books on Memphis rock history, as well as the history of Memphis wrestling, and a documentary called Memphis Heat. Definitely worth your time if you're into that history. Uh, so over here, we've got a lot of the really rare 45s. Uh, these will be cuts that are um, on small labels, uh, were from small pressings, and uh, are really sought after. So. When we see uh, folks traveling from around the world that want to come down and visit Sun and Stax and get into the history, we often see them coming by here afterwards to try to take home a piece of that history. Uh, so scrolling through these boxes, you'll find rarities from Soul Labels, uh, Rockabilly, East Arkansas, Country from North Mississippi, R&B, Soul, and Gospel from all over the region, but very, very unique finds. We as a store uh, specialize in Memphis music. Uh, and regional music, so you can see uh, on the walls uh, everything from uh, early uh, soul, uh, like Ernie Hines, uh, distributed through Stax Records, uh, through modern punk, uh, Jay Retard, uh, who uh, had a home at Garner Records. As you can see, the shop has uh, really grown, put a, a lot of vinyl, we really try to have a diverse selection, uh, some of everything. Mostly, uh, we're selling rock, R&B, soul, rockabilly, things from the region. But you'll also find new records. Uh, we work with independent labels, uh, both here and abroad, to make sure we bring in a selection of some of everything. All different genres, so country, folk, hip hop, world is over here, rock and roll comps up there. And this has everything from classical to comedy to spoken word. The bottom is like opera or Broadway. And soundtracks, avant-garde. Got some rare Memphis stuff over here. Some original uh, mono pressings, Otis Redding, Ollie and the Nightingales, both uh, Stax and Volt as well as uh, James Carr, who recorded on Gold Wax, which is a slightly lesser known label, but has uh, a great, great soul catalog. The walls are generally always a great place uh, to find rare titles. Um, over here, uh, you can find some original Blue Note first pressings uh, over our jazz section. So in addition to uh, R&B soul, Memphis also obviously has a great history with the blues. Uh, a lot of what we have uh, specializes in blues from uh, the 40s going forward. And uh, right now we happen to have a couple of really cool pieces. Um, 
This is an original uh, pressing that's still sealed. Uh, Beale Street Saturday Night was put together by uh, Jim Dickinson. Jim kind of has this amazing history in Memphis where uh, along with another uh, group of guys, uh, he put together a band called Mud Boy and the Neutrons. And uh, it was their way to pay tribute to all the blues artists that they grew up listening to and loved and ended up uh, befriending. Uh, so Jim and this group started a country blues festival right down the street from us at the Levitt Shell. There's a, a great tradition of these uh, bluesmen who wanted to continue to uh, unearth all of this Memphis music and carry that legacy forward. So it's really cool to see this newer generation continuing to do so. Yeah, a lot of the posters uh, and uh, things you see in here uh, are what was from the famed uh, 70s museum. It was uh, a little nook in the store uh, that really, uh, you know, was a tribute uh, to time past. So as you go around, you'll see uh, a lot of that sort of stuff. Uh, one interesting uh, Memphis connection, uh, this old uh, Warriors poster from the cult classic film, the lead character uh, who's standing uh, front and center went to MUS, a local uh, boys school, before he uh, moved out to LA and got into acting. Jim Dickinson uh, actually was uh, working down the street at Ardent. Uh, he was, I think, their first creative employee that they hired. and. Uh, there was a uh, nationwide contest going on to write the Batman theme song. So he got together with a group, uh, mostly uh, guys from a band called Lawson and Four More that has some great garage singles uh, that you can find. And they made a song called uh, Batarang and uh, submitted that uh, for the contest. Didn't win, but it's a killer uh, little garage tune. But the actual Batmobile uh, from Adam West uh, is I think still owned by Jerry Lawler here in town. I, I saw that he put it up for sale uh, at some point soon. I don't know if it's sold, but uh, you could still every once in a while catch Lawler around town driving uh, the Batmobile. Fun little connection. I've talked a lot about Jim Dickinson, but he really uh, is kind of the glue that uh, pulled a lot of the different scenes together. And this I'm just dead, I'm not gone uh, was a famous saying that he had uh, about you know, the influence uh, that he believed that he would have uh, on the Memphis scene and that uh, so many before him had had. A lot of cool old magazines. They're for sale. We're, we're pretty picky about what we uh, sell, but you can find some of the great old rock magazines, you know, Cream, Fusion, Craw Daddy, as well as newer things like uh, Mojo. So we talked a lot about the uh, Memphis blues history. This is a really, really rare uh, record, hard to find. Gus Cannon was originally in a group uh, called the Memphis Jug Band. And so these are all old songs that he had probably recorded in the late 20s uh, when Beale Street was really kind of the big swing and happening uh, street for all of the South. So Gus, years later, was still uh, with us and Stax wanted to kind of expand on what all they had. You know, they were primarily an R&B and soul label, but they had some good blues stuff that they put out too. So this is one of the rarest records on Stax. And we came across this sealed copy uh, about a year ago. It's just not one you really see out in the wild. So we were pretty excited uh, when that walked in the door. So over here, we've got a lot of our Memphis R&B, soul, and blues 45s. Uh, this stretches back to the early days of Stax through high records and some of the uh, side labels uh, that you don't see quite as much, Gold Wax, Sounds of Memphis, XL, and some of the others. Uh, we've also got a number of original Sun records here, uh, all the early country blues, rockabilly, gospel, everything that uh, Sam Phillips was recording. Jimmy Hart came through, or I'd show you some of the Gentry's 45s that he was on. Uh, Jimmy owns a little bar uh, down in Florida, and every time he comes through, always make sure to grab any of the Gentry's 45s uh, that he was on and uh, puts those up. So that's uh, always cool to see him around. So where we're located is right down the street from Ardent uh, Recording Studios. Ardent has a great history in Memphis. Not only uh, did they have their own label putting out rock bands like Big Star, uh, they also did a lot of overflow sessions uh, for Stax, but also great bands uh, from you know, ZZ Top forward have recorded there, and it's a great little studio. This is a lot of the employees uh, that have worked in the store. There's Sherman. Uh, next to him here is uh, Scott Bomar. Scott runs uh, a uh, recording studio and record label called Electrophonic. So from here, uh, Scott, like a lot of people, uh, really delved into the music scene and uh, this was kind of a jumping off point. Uh, Andre Lyle, who you see here, is uh, 
an amazing writer. Uh, she has written articles for Mojo. Uh, she's done liner notes for Light in the Attic, all sorts of people. Uh, worked at the Brooks Museum around the corner from us uh, before and uh, has really been uh, integral in uh, moving the hip hop scene forward here in town with a great uh, radio show that she has on local station WEVL. So it's really uh, interesting to see how Shangri-La, you know, kept the scene connected, but then also had people that have moved on from here to really continue to grow the Memphis music story. Leaving Shangri-La, the rain has let up, and we are headed to the last record shop of the day in Memphis, Goner Records. Welcome to Goner Records. We're here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, we are a record shop and a label. We also run a festival here. The shop opened in 2004. It's uh, something that I opened along with uh, my partner, Eric Friedel, who started the label about 10 years prior and kind of ran the label and a mail order out of his, uh, out of his closet uh, for the first you know, nine or 10 years. And uh, when I moved back to town from Washington, D.C. in uh, 2000, we started looking for something to do. We didn't know exactly what it was gonna wind up being. And a friend of ours, who Eric was in a band called The Oblivions, um, Greg Cartwright, now has rain, the raining sound, uh, had, a, had a shop here in the same location called Legba Records. Um, so it was already a record store, and he was getting ready to move to Asheville, North Carolina. And so uh, it sort of seemed like this was what we needed to do. We needed to open a record store where Legba had been and kind of merge Ghana Records, which had sort of at that point just existed online and uh, as a kind of small label and um, roll that into a record, record shop and see if we could use sort of the record shop together with the label, together with this online community that was already there and selling sort of records on, through the website, the mail order, kind of roll all three of those together and make sort of a viable business. Uh, and so that was 04 and we're still kicking. So um, uh, we're, we're glad that we are, uh, are, are still going, especially in such kind of weird times. This is the store. We, you know, put kind of new stuff that is just in here up front. We got a big wall of 45s over here to this side. We love 45s. Um, I, and I always have since I've been going to record stores. I, I just love having one record on, a, a track on one side and a track on the other. I love the history of music in the 60s where there was regional labels and regional hits. and things were not tied to sort of this larger kind of payola and monopolizing of major labels and everything. It was like a time where you really could just have a regional hit and that could be a success. And in Memphis, you know, we had labels like Sun and Stax and Meteor. We had a, a you know, a big robust kind of music industry of, of local labels and labels that were able to succeed uh, starting small. We've got, you know, uh, a bunch of sort of reissues or newer issued 45s, you know, we're a label as well. And so we've always done, um, we've always done records on, on vinyl. Vinyl never stopped for us. Um, Eric was putting out vinyl back in 93 with, uh, his first record was the band from Japan called Guitar Wolf, their first record. Here is sort of our newer rock and pop um, section reissues. 60s, 70s, current pop stuff. We've got kind of a small section of that. Then it rolls into your standard rock records. Slade, Hawkwind, Rainbow, Beatles, Monkeys. Um, we've got a very small CD section. The CD section has gradually gotten smaller and smaller. So that's all that's left. This section here, all the way across this side is punk and indie, garage, underground, etc. So you've got reissues of cool Australian proto-punk bands like Color Balls and uh, great Ohio bands like Obnox and, um, and there's a Billy Childish uh, record, you know, Liddy Lunch, Nick Allison. New stuff, old stuff, all kinds of sort of, you know, off the beaten path kind of things. These is the kind of stuff that is our, the stuff that we like and kind of more of our bread and butter. It's what we sell online more. It's our, our, our probably favorite stuff if we were gonna pick one. We've got Oddball and Folk, International, love the international stuff as well. Metal sections over here, uh, some 78s. Jazz sections over here, soundtracks, country, Elvis, 
gets his own section in Memphis. Box sets are used punk, garage, indie underground, rapid hip hop, reggae, electronic. This is soul and R&B, gospel section, blues, and then our Memphis section. This is first Church of the Elvis impersonator. This guy, uh, Tommy Foster, who was an artist in town. He used to own the coffee shop that is over here. And this used to be the door, like facing out onto the street. So like if you're walking in the neighborhood, <laughs> going to the bar over here or something like that, you could put a quarter in and it would do its whole thing. It sort of lights up and plays a song and everything. And again, you got more 45s up here. Uh, Gospel, glam, bubblegum, reggae, hip hop, girl group, sun, rockabilly, garage psych, Memphis garage, swamp pop, Beatles, a British invasion, and then just like just in. Um, there's a whole soul section that's all over there. Gospel, Motown, country, 50s, rock. Just in is just kind of anything that's come in, and so you got all kinds of different stuff up there. Um, we got a, some rare stuff that's in right now. There's a Syl Johnson's first record on Twy Night. Uh, and then here is, uh, this is our stuff. This is all the Goner stuff. So like I said, we do sort of garage and um, indie stuff. It's, and it's from all over the place. We do, we've done some Memphis records. We've done records from different places, a bunch of Australian stuff. Uh, Eddie Current Suppression Ring. We did um, records with uh, back, you know, 10 years ago or so. Carbonos were a great punk band from Atlanta. Uh, Cobra Man's two piece skate kind of disco band from LA. Uh, they're really great. We found them on a Thrasher video uh, and uh, fell in love with them and did a couple records with them. Cosmic Psychos or classic uh, heavy um, kind of sludgy Australian great rock and roll band. Uh, Benny is a New Orleans like analog synth guy, sort of sounds like a weird 70s sci-fi um, soundscapes sort of thing, like you're in your own sci-fi movie. Jay Retard was a good buddy of ours. We reissued all of his original records. Eric put out his first single and first LP. We also put, started a, a music festival in uh, 2005 called Goner Fest that um, we bring people in from all over the world to Memphis and people fly in all, from all over the place and pack into a you know, small club and see all kinds of weird, fun bands. We're gonna have to do that online this year, so we're still kind of getting our head around what that's gonna look like. But it's gonna happen one way or another. We started this because I feel like, it's how I found out about music. It's how I discovered that I loved music was being in record stores and digging around in them and checking out the, who they, liked and uh, you know who their thinks were on the back of records that I liked and then figuring out what label they were on and looking at into all the other records that were on that label and reading zines and, and then talking to people at record stores and getting recommendations and seeing what people clerks liked and I feel like I had these kind of, the, the, those were sort of seminal moments for me both where I was growing up in Oklahoma City when I was in high school and then in college here in Memphis I don't know, it's where I found, it's how I found out about music and kind of discovering music that way made it, it was part of the reason that we opened the shop and wanted to do the shop the way we wanted to do it, which was starting with music that we cared about and that's what we stocked. And um, we, we never felt like we wanted to sort of put records in our store because we, we thought we could sell them. We would rather have records in our shop that we could turn people onto new stuff. Over 16 years, this entire industry has changed quite a bit, both from like the decline of CDs to the increase of, you know, major labels repressing vinyl up into, you know, Spotify and, you know, other people that are selling online and, you know, knocking out smaller shops that are, you know, niche shops because you can just aggregate everything and pull in anything. So we've, we've sort of had to be flexible through all of that. 
Well, to me, you know, like the thing, the thing that's great about going to a record store is there's just, it's just so tactile. Like, you know, you're, you're flipping through things and one thing can lead to another and they're, you know, somebody's gonna be playing something. So whatever's playing is always kind of interesting to me. There's somebody that is behind the counter that can talk to me about most of these records. So if you're comfortable enough talking to somebody, that can lead you down this whole path of finding new music. But there's just something magical about, about rocking into a shop and knowing that you could dig something up that you've never heard before and find it and go home learning something new and finding out about someplace new that then sort of leads you into some new web of, of stuff. And there are ways that you can do that sometimes online, but I feel like you lose some the magic when you're just going off of a recommended if you like sidebar you lose the personal kind of thing that makes these things interesting and to me that community is sort of the, the thing that you know is, is the most important part of this so you know and in Memphis I mean you talk and are going to talk to a bunch of my friends and people that we've worked together with for a long time so you know Shangri-La we don't there's no competition with Shangri-La the other record store in town like we send people there all the time they send people to us all the time uh, we love those guys and uh, same thing with Sun like when we do the festival we do a tour at Sun we do a tour at uh, done tours at Stacks. to us like that's what's ma magical about Memphis and there is a community here both within Memphis and then sort of outside of Memphis that we've created through you know through the label and through the festival and that's one of the things that I think sets us apart from some other other places and I feel like we're lucky that we've been able to do it as long as we, we have. I don't know how many other places you get to go in and there's a Memphis section. Like, I, we're constantly digging up other cool records. And you know, if you're a nerd about records like me, like just finding a new label is exciting. And then there's guys that are, you know, super into, like there's this Stone Crush, you know, comp that just came out that a couple of our friends worked for like 10 years with Light in the Attic to put together this soul comp from 77 to 87. Um, and it's totally amazing. It's like all these electro records and some of those came out of us, you know, come out, came out of the store and we're still finding those things and it's super fun to text a picture of something that you find to those guys and say, man, have you ever seen this? What's the story with this? And just, you know, share stories with that. It's almost like you have to sort of experience the shop or have a conversation and those are the things that are kind of interesting about it. But it's a hard thing to do to sort of get across onto a screen, you know? Because, and that's part of the thing that's, and that's, that's really speaks to your question, right? Like it's, this is an actual experience. It's that, you know, we're getting further and further away from being able to do this, especially at this time. It's hard to just go out and do something and be someplace and sort of experience it and be able to say, wow, that was great. Now we're trying to recreate that experience online on a website or with an online event or with some sort of programming or content and I don't know it just it sucks it's not fun for anybody but it's it's the only thing we've got to do right now and so you just try and do it the best you can I'm ready to get back to a bunch of people you know uh, that are way into music that all come into town and having those experiences with those people and getting to see music and show up to them and have cool experiences in the record shop. And my favorite thing in the world is playing something and have somebody say, what is this, can I buy it? You know, it's the best. Having visited the two major record shops in Memphis, we still had time for one more stop. So we visited Stax, the Museum of American Soul Music. Now having gone pretty much the entire day without eating, we took a friend's recommendation and are headed to Dyer's Burgers. Dyer's make their patties by frying them in over 100 year old grease. They tasted great and we recommend this place to everyone visiting Memphis. So we're at Dyer Burgers in downtown Memphis and we're going to try a burger that was made in 107 year old grease. Good. I'm next. 
We tried our best to make the three-hour drive back to Nashville, but were unable to keep going as we had no sleep the night before. We found a small town in between and stayed overnight. In the morning, we did find this cool zombie defense car in the parking lot, just in case of an apocalypse. We are now headed back to Nashville to visit Vinyl Tap, a record store and tap house, at 9 a.m. A great way to start day three, our longest, most exciting day yet. Welcome to Vinyl Tap. So I grew up here in East Nashville, uh, right up the street. Well, that's where we are right now. This was a laundromat, this building, when my mom was a kid. And so she walked from my grandparents' house right down here all the time and did their laundry here. Um, and it's been various things over the years and I, you know, went away to college and I came back in town and had always wanted to have a record store. I was the only person in the 90s in college that had a turntable <laughs> in my school and had records and, uh, you know, got made fun of and I always bought vinyl my whole life basically. I, you know, listened to my parents' records for years and then started my own collection. So I had many horrible corporate jobs, one after the other, for 15, 20 years, and left a job at a big company in 2015 and couldn't take it anymore and didn't want to go back to the same old thing and was like, well, now is the time to do this and we're going to. And I had the idea with the, the name just came to me, of course, watching Spinal Tap. Uh, and I had this idea like, you know, 15 years ago or something that I wanted to have. I was like, I don't understand why I go to these other stores, why I can't like have a beer while I'm there. There would be like bars next door to stores all over the places or coffee shops or that sort of thing. And I was like, I, these things go perfectly for me. And I'd gotten really into craft beer 10 years ago or so and sort of thought of the name around the time. And I was like, well, I should just do that. I don't know why people aren't doing that yet. 2015, this building became open early on, right around the same time that I left the job and got going and started a business plan and all that sort of thing, and it just happened to line up. And it was a really popular music venue and restaurant in here for 10 or 12 years called The Family Wash, which was named after the laundromat I mentioned. And so it was very established in the neighborhood already. So that was helpful, I think, besides the people wandering in and being like, I can't believe this isn't the family wash anymore. <laughs> um, it was helpful because we could say, in the old family wash. So people that were, you know, neighborhood residents would know exactly where it was when we opened. So, and that helped bring a lot of attention here initially. But you know, we just always wanted to have a very curated record store, primarily vinyl, and really excel at our beer selection and our cocktail selection. So put the two together and they are equally focused in this place. We devote equal time to, to both of them and it seems to really be into what people want to do, which is nice. We have drinks named after uh, bands and we have sandwiches named after bands. Right up front here, you will see our fine merch section that my friend Austin has designed all of our artwork for. So he's a, a guy here in town I've been friends with a long time. So that was super nice to have a you know professional graphic designer in, <laughs> in your world to handle that stuff. These are the first thing that you see when you come in because this is that that new new this is literally the stuff from the last few weeks that we get right on top of stuff for people so it's the you know it's what we want to push immediately right when people come in the door so it makes it easy for us and for them there's a lovely margot price there her new album that just came out as well so she signed a bunch of copies for us which is awesome local hero so we try to promote that stuff as much as we can here is our local section and you'll see everything from Alabama Shakes, Saw Them Witches, Hailstorm, good friends of ours, um, all kinds of stuff. Lily Hyatt, a lot of these people will come in and hang out here, um, have beers, buy lots of records. So we've become friends with a lot of these guys over the years, Margo and um, Hailstorm and Brittany from Alabama Shakes and uh, Pat Sansone from Wilco Lives Up the Street and Carl and Tom from My Morning Jacket. and. So that's been like the most exciting thing for me really is just, you know, loving all these people's music and then making a place that they want to come hang out, which is still, it blows me away. Still, <laughs> they're like, yeah, I want to go there. I want to go to Todd's place and hang out. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Our main store here, we've got our wonderful staff picks. 
for the week. Probably nothing uh, out of the unusual here. The great new Fiona on Apple record, the great new Chicks record. Uh, this is our boy Luke Schneider, good friend of ours, known for a long time, local guy. Third Man Records put his album out and it's all ambient pedal steel, which is pretty awesome. He played with Margo Price for a long time and all, a whole ton of great rock bands in town. And then our uh, display walls is for, you know, the high roller <laughs> stuff. So basically anything that's, you know, above 40 bucks or so gets up on the wall, a lot of the used stuff especially. So we are primarily a new releases store as far as new pressings go. This is all of our, you know, classic rock section. So this is all new pressings, but like classic titles for the most part. So. And that tends to do like almost better than anything else here. I'd say the classic rock and then like the local, more Americana stuff does really well. So the, you know, Jason Isabel and Casey Musgraves and those people. And that's also primarily new releases and then the occasional, you know, reissue and stuff. So I think it's one of those things where people sit at the bar and they hear great rock music primarily, you know, and they're like, oh, I want that right now. So we have all of our other genres down here. There's, uh, you know, electronica and dance music and then punk and ska here and then all the metal and sort of heavy rock, uh, which also does really well here. Hip hop back here, funk, soul, R&B's got a section there and jazz as a section and then Country, bluegrass, Americana. And then we have a whole section dedicated to Third Man Records back there, because um, it's nice that they put out so many different genres. We have a great relationship with Third Man too, which is awesome, so they've been really good to us over the years. They love helping local stores, and they have really awesome stuff, and they have a huge, you know, rabid fan base. So this is all the high-end new stuff that's in stock right now. This is a lot of the new releases from this year uh, that we still have in stock that aren't quite as new as the lovely counter uh, area that I took you took you through before. Back here, we have our used section. You can see used bin right there. And we cover all the same kind of genres here that we have there. It's basically organized the same way. This thing stays pretty stocked. We've been getting a lot more over the years in used, you know, people selling stuff to us and there's no uh, lack of quality stuff around if you can get your hands on it. So as you might imagine in a big music city, it's Lots of people have records. So the other part of this wonderful store that we have here is the taps. So obviously we are vinyl tap, so vinyl and tap, just like Spinal Tap. Craft beer is a big deal to us. Uh, that's half of the reason that we're here as well. So we pride ourselves on our craft beer selection. We do lots of drafts and uh, growlers to go and lots of bottles and cans also. We stick with about half local and usually half national sort of brands. Uh, and then the old, old standbys like Coors Banquet, you know, one of the original. Any number of people that are in town here, Bearded Iris, Blackberry Farms, Blackstone, Turtle Anarchy, Tennessee Brew Works, we work with all those companies, a uh, little Harpeth, and then also a lot of well-regarded brands from out of town, Bells and Dogfish Head and uh, Wiseacre from Memphis, really great brand that we carry all the time work well with our distributors and that's a really fun part of the job is getting to taste new beers every week so and getting to switch stuff in and out and be excited just like we are about records like telling people oh, this is new and you know this goes great with this and yeah enjoy it and then buy those records <laughs> we keep it pretty fresh all the time we have the standards that we always have you know a lot of times it's about half of the taps that are up here at any given time that are just always the same the ones we sell a ton of uh, dogfish head sequence and wiseacre tiny bomb and bearded iris home style and that stuff like does so well that we just you know there'd be you know, anarchy in here. If the people can't get their beers they like. But a lot of other people that come in uh, want something new all the time, want to try new beers, and they know that we know what we're doing with that stuff, and then we always have something really good and new for them. So we at least change a couple of taps every week, pretty much. So that's the really, really fun part of being here, too, and I think that's what sets us apart, you know, having the full bar in the store as well, so. We could have spent a lot longer at Vinyl Tap trying all the craft beers, Unfortunately, the kitchen was closed during our visit, but from what we see on their Instagram, the food looks great. Now we are going to The Great Escape. This store is where most of the record store owners and managers in the area got their start. 
So we're here at the Great Escape on Charlotte Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee, and we're going to take a spin around and check out what's inside. And not only do they have what you see out here on the sales floor, but there's a massive warehouse. So David's going to take us around the store and give us a tour. Stay tuned. I started here in 2003 at the original Broadway store, just as an hourly, you know, worked my way up and made a career out of it. I love coming to work every day. Every day is different. Uh, you never know what's coming through the front door. I have worked retail before, but this is a job I love. This location uh, was opened in 2008. Uh, this was sort of like the superstore. We originally had the original store on Broadway. It closed in 2010. So we consolidated a lot of the stuff to this location to make it a superstore. We have other stores. We have two here in Nashville, one in Murfreesboro, which is the newest. We have one in Louisville and one in Bowling Green. Each store has its own feel. Each one is different. This one, our main seller is vinyl. Our Louisville store is almost strictly comics. They have, you know, everything, but each one is different. If you ask different people what The Great Escape is to them, some people will say it's a comic store. Some people say, you know, that's where I get my records. It's different to each person. Most people, when they come in, first thing they do is turn around and look at the record wall. These are the more collectible, rarer records, and that's the first thing that most people do when they walk through that door. And over here is something that is kind of a Nashville thing. We have two entire walls of nothing but signed records from country stars. Living, dead, <laughs> you can't have that anywhere else. And we have a lot of them. So that's something that's unique to this store. There are still plenty of people who listen to CDs. Uh, it's not a dead format just yet. <laughs> You know, they haven't completely done away with them. So we have a lot of CDs and we have people who shop it every day. Also, something that is not a dead format anymore, it's actually making a comeback just like vinyl has for us, are cassettes. Rock and roll cassettes, hard to find metal. People will come in and clear out everything we have put out for one day. It's great stuff like Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, it still sells like crazy. This is where we have things that don't fit with other things. At The Great Escape, we don't limit ourselves to just one thing, like records or comic books. We have things like, like this. There are autographed star pictures and things like that, posters, old magazines. Anything we think we can sell, we will try it. So everybody has something that, you know, they can look at and go, oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you guys had that. We also carry new comics. We have a comic subscription program where if you sign up for your comics, we hold them for you every week. You get 25% off the cover price. So, you know, that's a great incentive and you don't miss any comics. We also have a huge selection of vintage back issue comics, some rarer. You'll see those at the top and, you know, just amazing comics all around, just ask. <laughs> we'll get the stick with a nail in it <laughs> to get them down, if anybody wonders how we ever get those down. We also have a large selection of back issue comics. They're bagged and boarded. You know, if you're looking for old issues, it's here. Something else that we have that the other stores don't have, we have live events here. Once, you know, the coronavirus is over, we will have live events once again. We have bands, we've had DJs. The possibilities are endless. And it's a nice thing to have to bring folks in and give them something for free. Also one of our older formats are 78s. We still have a rabid fan base for 78s. How they've lasted this long, I have no idea. They are so fragile. But um, we do have people who love 78s, the sound. Uh, the music, and uh, nothing ever really goes away at The Great Escape. You can always find stuff here if you're looking for vintage media. When I said that formats don't die at The Great Escape, VHS, it has had a resurrection. People collect all kinds of VHS. They love horror, they love exploitation, and we just cannot keep it in. Our DVDs start at 99 cents. They are popular. We sell a ton of 99 cent DVDs. Um, they're great titles in here. It's just stuff that we're overstocked on. 
and it's a great bargain for anyone who wants to come in and get some movies. If you're looking for a title, we more than likely have it. If we don't have it here, we'll call one of the other stores and have it transferred. We'll find it for you. Everybody, since they've been shut in, is buying the old systems. They always need new controllers and things like that. So that's, we sell, you know, new controllers and hookups for all those old systems. They've come back. Vintage games, you know, have never really gone away, which, you know, is great for us. Keeps us in business. <laughs> and we have, you know, games from all the systems, Sega Genesis, even some Sega Master System, regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo, even some Atari 2600, and then two newer disc games. GameCube, Wii, Wii U, PlayStation, you Sega Saturn games, Game Gear. I know this is a trip down uh, memory lane because it's a lot of those systems didn't uh, last that long, but uh, we've got them. PlayStation 2, 3, original Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So that catches us up for now. Uh, we've got some more collectible games, a little higher price, more, more sought after, a little harder to find. Also, we carry Magic the Gathering and Pokemon, two card games that are really popular and have been for some time. Kids love to come in and dig through them and you know, finish their decks. People will sit for hours and go through these. They're only a nickel a piece, so why not? We also carry vintage stereo equipment, turntables, speakers, and receivers do best for us because we sell the music and that's what you need to play it. This is our latest rival section in Pop Rock Soul. It's our most popular section. Most people, the regulars, will shop here. It's the freshest stuff and 90% of the stuff will sell out of here before it makes it to the regular stock. If you're looking for Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, uh, Beatles, this is where you'll find it. We also carry a lot of new vinyl. It's very popular. We've got some classic rock. We've got country, we've got rock. We have one of the largest collections of country LPs in the country. Think of a country artist, we more than likely have it. We also sell movie star country mu music uh, photos. You need Roy Rogers, we've got him. Or Raquel Welch. <laughs> also, 45s do well for us. We have all kinds of artists, collectible old rockabilly stuff, sun, R&B stuff that is great, Northern Soul. Something for everybody. And today is the day we put the new 45s out. So there's fresh stock every Thursday. This is just back up from the things that are up front. These are duplicates of DVDs we have back there. We were going to have a sale right before we shut down, which is what this is. Comics, CDs, records. Yeah, we were ready to go. It was gonna be a dollar sale. Everything in here was gonna be a dollar, but um, pandemic had other ideas. <laughs> and we'll eventually have it. We've got it ready, but this is only part of the warehouse. The other part goes that way. Also, Mike has been here for quite a few years. Um, Right. He works on the records. At one point he was uh, the manager at the uh, Broadway store, but he just works on records all day long. I have uh, been in management at Great Escape. I ran our Bowling Green store for quite a few years. Uh, now I'm the record guy. Uh, I like to go out and hunt for records. Anytime we get a phone call or a lead on albums, uh, I'll hop into our company van and, and take a trip and try to bring back uh, as many as I can. Of course, we always get a lot of people bringing stuff in the store to sell to us. Everything we have in our store, for the most part, is used. We get some of the best stuff from our customers. If you have things to sell, you bring them by to this desk. We'll take a look at them, condition check them, price them out while you wait. And most people will spend the money they get right here. Next on our schedule is to travel about an hour north of Nashville to Clarksville. Clarksville is a great small town. If you're in Nashville and have a few extra hours, it is worth the drive. 
join us as we visit N Vinyl. Hey, welcome to N Vinyl. All right, so we started in vinyl, me and my brother Matt. We started in vinyl about uh, February 2018. Um, we had a booth in a store, and uh, we just wanted to test the water, see how vinyl was gonna sell in this town. Uh, we're about an hour almost, like outside of Nashville. So we just wanted to see what the vinyl buying is like in Clarksville. So we started with a booth. Uh, it did pretty well, and then uh, this spot downtown opened up, and we were just took a risk and uh, made the leap and we're like, all right, let's open this up. So we've been in this spot a little over a year and a half. It's uh, done really well. It's growing faster than we expected. Right now we do a lot of everything. Um, I really like punk and independent hip hop. So I try and put in a lot of independent hip hop stuff, sprinkle it in there. It's hard to really do that when uh, we're a smaller shop. So we got to think about the space that we have and what we put in here. So a lot of it is driven by what sells the best, like, I mean, classic stuff like Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Metallica, um, Mac Miller actually sells really well, like just a bunch of the artists that sell really well, we have to have that, but I wanna put more stuff in here that are focused towards like certain smaller groups. Cause when that person finds out we have that one record, they're like, okay, I'm gonna keep coming back here because they actually carry that stuff. We have more independent releases as far as like hip hop, especially. So Nashville is full of record stores. I mean, it's a music town. So they have a lot of music. There's a lot of people that listen to music, play music. They have a lot of that there. Um, and in fact, I had a friend who asked me like, why didn't you open up this shop in Nashville? I felt like it would do really well. And I was like, I don't know if it would because we'd have so much competition. So out here, we don't really have that. There's a couple places that sell vinyl, but like, we're like the only record record store in town. So I was like, when we first opened, people would come in, they'd be like, oh cool, now I don't have to drive all the way to Nashville to buy records, which was kind of what we were hoping to get, was that local people. And then on the other side, if you live in Nashville and you come out here, you're more than likely to find something that you possibly wouldn't there because it gets picked up so quick. All right, so our new vinyl we have on one wall right now. This is actually our fastest growing section. A lot of our sales come from this. So we just have it all on one, one aisle, one row. Um, we keep expanding it, keeps trying to push itself to the front of the store. And the only way we can go is kind of up at this point. There's always like uh, rearranging here because it's such a small space. Like this actually, this there was tape right here that said new arrivals. Our new arrival section is gone because this got absorbed by new records. We do a lot of local stuff, local art. There's local art on the walls. Uh, the magnets are actually made by someone local. She just popped in and asked if we want to make them. So she'll take uh, magazines and then turn them into um, fridge magnets. And there was a bunch of them. Like uh, they actually sold pretty well. Uh, down here, this is just artwork that I had when we first opened. This actually hasn't moved. This has been here since we opened. And I think it's getting close to the time where it'll have to come down and we'll have products and shelves and stuff up here to make room because we're kind of outgrowing the space like down. So we kind of got to go up with stuff. And I did like the brick wall. It'd be weird to just cover the whole entire thing and just be like, hey, there's a brick wall behind all this stuff. But I like the fact of, or like, when you walk in and you just see music stuff everywhere. Like, okay, there's the records. You look up, there's probably like a couple rows of CDs and you look above that and there's like music memorabilia and stuff like that up top. So I just want to kind of feel it all. But until then, I have some of my personal like signed stuff, independent hip hop mostly, Lucero, Memphis band. Our use section is pretty much every other cabinet in here. They're broken up by like, we have like rock and pop, um, and then R&B and soul, jazz, uh, there's gospel, country, and we kind of break it off as soon as, like it used to be, when we opened, all we had was these, these four cabinets, and it was new on one side, used on the other. So within the last year and a half, we kind of expanded out this way. And as we got more used, we would put in what would actually be able to fit into a whole section. So it's like, okay, we got a lot of R&B and soul in. Now we can take it out of just the used section 
and make a R&B and soul section. We put all the 50 cent ones down at the bottom. They're just mixed in there. We'll have like a, a little stool people can actually put in here. Kind of want to put wheels on it so I can just wheel around. But uh, that makes it a little easier to look through. We have a lot of people that kind of search through this and try to find something good. A lot of people like sample stuff and uh, this is their section. And then we have all the 45s or seven inches here. Um, this is a handful of them. Basically we put mostly like um, all the picture sleeve stuff. Like, so we had a bunch of picture sleeve ones uh, that we bought recently from someone. We bought like over 150,000 from some guy last summer and uh, still have a good chunk of them. But most uh, we kind of picked through and found all the picture sleeve stuff, put it in here and kind of organized it. At first we just had them in boxes and uh, nobody really wanted to look to those. And like as soon as we stuck them in like this and put like the little tabs for the artists and everything, then they started selling a little more. So again, it's all about like the display and like how people look at what you have. And it's nice. I mean, these are fun. Like I didn't really care for these much at first because I was like, I don't want to flip the record every two and a half, three minutes. Like that sucks. But these are actually really fun when you have like parties and stuff like that where everybody's just coming through. Instead of someone like, play this record, they can get, you hand them 45, it's like, cool, I only have to endure this person's musical taste for like two and a half, three minutes, and then it's done. Like, I don't have to, that's good, that's fine. After that, we have like all the cleaning supplies and everything, and there's some CDs tucked at the bottom. We kind of just tuck the CDs wherever at this point, so they're kind of sprinkled throughout the store. I kind of want to add more stuff to the wall, but this is basically the more expensive stuff, uh, the stuff we want to catch people's eyes. Just a mix of everything. I really like cassettes. They're fun to hold, and they're just fun to play. I wish I had a cassette player in my car. So my initial thing was to have like a wall of cassettes, and I wanted it to go all the way to the top, which doesn't really make sense other than uh, just look cool. And we kind of put all the new stuff on here, on these three, and then everything else is used. I try to put the metal on this black one just because it's special. We actually sell more cassettes than we do CDs which is nice and it's fun. But most of the eye-catching stuff is like right here. So as you look at all this Bruce Springsteen, like all the, like the classic rock, all that stuff is in here. So over here is like just basically a lounge area. A lot of times people come in and they might be with somebody that doesn't want a record shop. And if you know anybody that likes to record shop, a lot of them will spend hours in a record store. So we like having this space for when somebody doesn't want to just walk around and basically follow the person around the store. They can sit over here, they usually look at their phone, they can look at the books, there's some games under there. We have those also for uh, across the street, the line for the restaurant gets pretty long. There's sometimes like a 45 to an hour wait. Um, they'll come in here and just play games and stuff and then just go back over there because they'll be sitting outside so we always welcome people to just come hang out if they want to I mean there's always music playing in here and it's a pretty fun environment especially when you come in there's just people hanging out doing whatever this whole wall was covered in plaster and someone cut this out of the plaster left that part painted it and so that's stuck there so whenever we were first moving in like I would look at the, I would look in the window and I'd be like, man, this place is cool. And it had this Tennessee American flag. It's just like everything that somebody would want. It's like, okay, cool, Tennessee pride, uh, American pride. This is like all wrapped in this one little plastered uh, state flag on the wall. And then uh, once a month we would do free shows and basically just take everything off this rug and then the band would set up and then everyone just stands around and just play and then I'll set the, the mixer and everything back there. So this was a really cool, fun spot. This is a, a nice area and we're trying not to have the records encroach on it too much. So End Vinyl is about an hour out of Nashville, but it's well worth the drive and you can spend many more hours than that here digging through the crates of a really greatly curated shop. They have handpicked a lot of really great vinyl and you'll definitely enjoy your visit. It's worth the trip. So if you're used to shopping in Nashville and just want to trek a little bit farther, definitely check out End Vinyl. All right, so up here we have a whole lot of 45s. Um, they used to be piled up right here, and this used to be a whole lot smaller walkway. And we kind of sold through a lot of them, so it's kind of okay now where you can walk up. But um, tried to organize them to where they were all up here. But these boxes are filled, and I think these boxes hold around like 400 or so each. 
and then all these boxes that are just filled with 45s and it's kind of like almost like a back stock at this point but we do have some people that are really into 45s and they come up and it's like sometimes we'll do uh, sales where it's like five cents five cents of 45 or most of the time it's 25 cents but but there's a there's a lot of good music in here that we haven't even been able to go through yet but yeah it's cool yeah. <laughs> it is time to hit the back roads traveling from Clarksville to Cotton Town to visit the most unique shop we have ever seen. First of all, it's just my initials, Jason Thomas Broderick. So I'd folded records my whole life, learned to read off 45s actually. So uh, I was selling guitars, same people buy guitars, buy uh, records, you know. So found that I could do this legally out here and uh, just did it like eight years ago. The social media, I have people from all over the world come out here. It's crazy. As long as I keep getting stuff people hadn't seen, you know, I try to get stuff you hadn't ever seen or else why are you going to drive all the way out here, you know? Yeah, I just serve the vinyl community, you know, the, the vinyl subculture, <laughs> which is what every, we all are, I guess, you know. Vinyl sniffers, record hounds, there's some diggers, you know, crate diggers, there's all kind of names for us. Snobs, <laughs> music snobs, that's another name for us. Usually, it's like, oh, look what I got the new so and so today. Yeah, I got it on vinyl, you know. <laughs> that's, all, that's what everybody says. But yeah, I, I stay pretty busy and it's fun, you know. I try to get stuff, like I said, from imports and just weird stuff. If I hadn't seen it and didn't know about it, I'm sure somebody else don't either, you know. I've had people from England, Australia out here, the Netherlands. Uh, <laughs> you know, people come to down, they get on their phone. Of course, I'm all over social media. That that's the advertisement that years ago would have cost me probably a lot of money. So I found a Craigslist, a guy in Hendersonville selling this building. They they were twins, and they were from uh, Australia, and they were like the Everly Brothers of Australia. They were like famous since they were little kids, and they would put their arm around each other and start singing like old vaudeville stuff. You know, they were a trip. They were like 80 something years old. So we got the building from him, which they ended up being real nice guys, and uh, they were. They, you look them up, the. Uh, the Ligardi twins. So I come out here one day and there's a guy out here about where you're standing taking pictures of this junky old building. I was like, who the hell, you know, who's that? Walk down here and we get talking stuff. So we go inside and he said, you ever heard of Goldmine Magazine? I said, oh yeah, I about went blind trying to read that little, all those listings, you know, growing up. Goldmine Magazine, which is like the internet to buy records before there's the internet. Which that was fun and I was, we were in, I was in the magazine. And the next day I closed down for a month and we painted it white. And, and I, you know, did it up and got a better sign because once the magazine come out and online, I was like, ugh, that looks like crap, you know. So gold mine's the reason why this place looks good now. I hang out here every day, seven days a week. If I'm not here, I'm not far. Yeah, y'all come on in. Show y'all everything. That's the Japanese stuff, which eh, eight, nine out of ten times, it makes our records sound like MP3s usually. That's so they could read them. They call it OB or OBI. You've heard different things, but 100% version vinyl, 70s, 80s, 60s. Back then, they couldn't just send a digital master, so they, they ain't gonna send the real master to Japan, right? So they, uh, they'd send a copy of it. So then the Japanese sound engineers would take that copy and usually go above what the master was sometimes. So a lot of times, these are like, I'll play them A and B them, and people's like, God, oh, man, it's, it is a big difference. So if you want the best sounded version of it, usually this is it. I'm kind of low. I'm a Japanese guy. I can't send nothing yet. We got to send it by boat, so it's going to take a little while, but still doing it. I got a man from Japan, you know, I got to hook up over there, so you don't see those around. And they're, they're high quality. Even the cardboard is better and thicker than ours, you know. And they're in the dollar section behind you. It's all like dollar, two for a dollar, whatever. 45s, of course. Seal copy of that. That changes three. Most people don't know nothing about that. So I try to get stuff you don't see everywhere. She used to open for Elvis. I keep going. How many times have you seen a fog hat shirt somewhere? I bet never. <laughs> I hadn't. Here's a good Beatles. You know, some colors. I like the color ones. These are like those imports, radio shows. I do like five for a dollar down here. One day on a sunny morning, these guys. This guy called and I couldn't understand him. They are from the Netherlands. And they were out, you know, out on some back road loss. So I finally get them here and they come in. And one of them didn't speak English at all, the other one spoke just a little bit. 
I said, hey, they, down there I'm doing, back then I did them for a quarter piece. I said, a quarter piece down there, they went down there, they just went to work, started pulling crap out. I started talking like I always do. He goes, shh, it's just me. And boy, they just, they was looking at every, I mean, they pulling out every record. I mean, every, both rows. I mean, these are two rows deep of this junk. So anyway, you know, I take the good with the bad. If you do trade-ins, I take it all. So they picked out about the stack that big, about $70. And they put it all back up nice and neat, and they never looked that good before or since. I don't know why they don't come back. I wish they would. And then I make shirts, old school iron-ons. And yeah, I, I, I check copyright. Sure. <laughs> you know, I don't think Don Knotts people's gonna mind if I make a shirt of Don Knotts. I don't know. <laughs> the office. You might not can use some of this stuff. There's Dwight. Remember the painting behind him when he took over? That was the painting. <laughs> That was it, I put it on a shirt. Guitars, I do set ups and I do lessons sometimes. I went to art school when I was a kid and then when I got a guitar when I was like 12, 13 and I just started playing guitar. It's just something I do. I don't try to do nothing serious, but I used to play out. I've been in studios and I've done a little bit, but nah. It's like eating or going to the bathroom, you know, it's just something that happens every day. I end up playing for a minute. You know, I'll, make, I'll record me playing along to some trap beat out here. That's my new thing, playing along to trap beats. So all these people on the Instagram go, man, that's dope, that's fire. <laughs> you know, and I'm just playing a bunch of blues all over of trap beats. When I went to get my business license, there was another place somewhere called the Groovy Record Room. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just throw my initials in front of it. Puts a person to the place, you know, because it's just me. Those are money records up there, you know. Top shelf, you know, they're up high. <laughs> White Label Bo Dilly, First Press, First Press, Jerry Lewis. Rolling Stone, Spain version of uh, Sticky Fingers. They didn't like the crotch shot over in Spain, so they made that cooler one. Well, that's Tiffany. Remember the, uh, I think we're alone now, the 80s Tiffany, redheaded girl? There's her and the chick playing right outside here. We had a cancer benefit right outside the building. Robert Fleischman, he sang Benny Vincent Invasion. He co wrote We on the Sky with Journey. He calls and checks on me every now and he's a real good guy. I've done interviews with him and Brendan both on my YouTube channel. I'll do interviews sometimes. My daughter and Joan Jett. But yeah, we met Joan twice. She was great. And you know, me being a single dad, I've always tried to show her like good, strong female role models. You know, she knows Joan Jett. She knows Cherie Curry. She knows Melanie, you know, uh, brand new shoe. I got a brand new pair of roller skates. That's her. We got to meet her, see her in concert. Angel, got to meet them. Uh, Jim Dandy, Black Oak, Arkansas, Cherie Curry, I got that straight from her. We're Facebook friends, but I've never met her yet, but I will. Kentucky Headhunters, Greg Martin, he's actually been here. And this is all by accident, it ain't like, uh, you know, ain't like I seek people out. I've, I've been pretty fortunate. I, I've been having trouble keeping all that full, because I get a few and then they, they, they just go. I've had stuff, as soon as I put a picture up of it, within five minutes, bam. Certain, you know, certain things like I've never even seen that or I've been looking for that forever and I can't find one. So that's kind of stuff I try to find, you know. Like I sold a Brenda Lee record to a dude in China for, it was 25 shipping and $30 record. So that's kind of stuff I sell online. Or on Instagram or Facebook, I put up videos every week. Like here's what I got this week. And then a day or two later, a lot of it's gone. And then some things hang around forever. You just don't ever know. You know how people are about records. When you see it, you better get it. Cause you'll be driving home going, man, I wish I would've got that, I should've got that. Then you get home, you look it up, go, oh, I, I didn't want to spend a lot more money, I should've got it. Then you call me, hey, is that still here? Nope, it's sold right after you left. You know, that's, that's how that goes. Yeah, I, I just did a radio station, a tie-in with a store, mainly just so when I'm taking stuff on and off and showing people stuff. And so I'll sell records right off the turntable. I'll, I'll play something when somebody walks in they never heard and they'll buy it right off the turntable. So then I got the radio station and I just kind of let it play and just pick out, like the like the stock here. I've I've tried to play stuff that you never you don't hear much or a version you never heard, but that's what it looks like. If you go live 365, there's links on the uh, Instagram and Facebook. I'll be doing stuff, you know, having it on the background. I think, man, this whoever's the DJ today is good, man. I like every song on here. I've ever every song. No, like, oh yeah, that's my station. No wonder. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is it. People actually drive out here. Do y'all buy records? Yeah, Because you are in the right place. Yeah,
I like Dylan because I always learned Dylan songs, and most people didn't know those songs, and they just assumed you wrote them. So I just let them think it. Man, that dude, man, you ever heard him sing and play? He's got great songs. <laughs> We finally had time to eat, so we're headed to 10 King Jack in Nashville to have dinner with some friends who are local to the area. After dinner and ice cream, we're now headed downtown to the Cambria Hotel. Welcome to our hotel. We have the wall of speakers. How fitting is it that we have a wall of speakers? We've been sitting here trying to play the guess the speaker game, your JBLs and your Realistics and your BMWs, and it's... Just really fitting, this is an awesome mural and one of the main reasons why we picked the hotel. Uh, the so, only reason why we picked the okay, hotel. Okay, it's the only reason why we picked the hotel. So, pretty pleased, everything's pretty clean. If you are a stereo or quadraphonic member to the channel, check out our exclusive haul video where we show off what we got at each store so far on the trip. If you're not a member, you can click the join button below and check out our perks, including getting these videos ad free. Yesterday was book solid and today is no exception. We have five shops on the docket, so let's get started. Our first shop is the most famous record store in Nashville. Now at their third location, which is in a building that was previously a church. Welcome to Grimey's. Let me show you around. This is our 20th anniversary. We're celebrating 20 years in business this year. Mike Grimes founded Grimey's and opened the store in December of 1999. It was a local shop in a small house in an area of town called Berry Hill. We had about 600 square feet and I was manager of The Great Escape at the time and I had managed two of their stores through the 90s. Then I got promoted to general manager and did not enjoy that position very much, I gotta say. I didn't have my hands on anymore. I wasn't hiring and training people and teaching them how to grade records. And you know, that was my favorite thing was doing the, the used and collectible records. And now I was more, you know, in meetings all day with the ownership and going to the stores. And um, my buddy, Mike Grimes, in the meantime, had opened this little record store called Grimey's. And I used to go over there, uh, hang out with him and complain <laughs> about my job. So uh, Mike opened a, a, a club called Slow Bar back then, uh, which got to be a very popular live music venue here in town. Small venue, but um, he aggressively booked really cool stuff. He brought the shins to town for the first time, uh, the postal service, My Morning Jacket, when they were just getting uh, known, played shows there. Um, Alex Chilton uh, played a show there, um, and so on and so on. And the Kings of Leon played one of their very first ever shows there. Mike got really involved in the venue and was thinking of closing the record store. And then he got this bright idea uh, to convince me to quit my job and go in with him and buy half the business. And basically, I would become the operating partner. We would do it together, but he would also be able to focus on his club at that point. Um, it worked. I quit my job and it was pretty scary. And, you know, I had some money that I was able to invest. We just kept going at it and growing the, growing the business. And we outgrew that place. And then we found a spot on 8th Avenue South. It was three times bigger. It was about 2,100 square feet. And so we moved there in 2004, June of 2004. And I hired uh, two more people. I hired Anna Lundy and Joshua Walker, and now they are the store managers. So Anna's the manager and Josh is the assistant manager. So I still got my two original staff, which is pretty amazing. Luke is a longtime employee of Grimey's. He's one of my staffers, one of my very first staffers. He goes back, man, probably 15, 17 years working at Grimey's. Also played steel guitar in uh, Margot Price's band. He's currently in Orville Peck's band, a steel guitar player. And now I've watched my two managers go from being mid 20 somethings to growing up, getting married, buying houses, and now raising children, you know, all working at the record store. So that's pretty gratifying, I gotta say. So we were on 8th Avenue from 2004, and you know, we were really aggressive about booking in stores, and I really think it has a lot to do with growing Grimey's business and reputation. Um, probably our biggest performance, though, that has ever happened. You know, what's the biggest band you ever saw in the smallest space? And for me, I would have to say Metallica. <laughs> when they played in the old basement below Grimey's in our old location. And Metallica Live at Grimey's, a double 10 inch was released from that show. 
still one of the most amazing uh, live music memories I have. <laughs> they were incredible. And they were funny. They had their families with them. They played Bonnaroo the next night. So they were looking for a place to play, really small show, uh, and asked their management, are there any record stores near Bonnaroo? We'd love to play in a record store while we're down there. And we got the phone call. So we had to keep it secret for about three months. Couldn't tell anybody. They told us if this gets out on social media, we're just gonna not do it. And then on the day, it actually happened. They showed up and set up and we, uh, we had a guest list of 50 people we could invite. The rest were Metallica fan club who won a lottery to get to go see this show. And so we had all of us, our significant others, and we invited our best metal customers. <laughs> and we had to just tell them, you don't want to miss this. I can't tell you what it is, but be here on this day at this time. And Metallica played for a room of 175 people. That was phenomenal. Um, and they were joking and having such a good time. I mean, it, making jokes about, you know, hey, maybe uh, if enough of you guys get into uh, this band, we can uh, get out of the play in these basements, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Any record label guys in the audience tonight? It's all on the record. And uh, they were just so loose and funny. You got to know their personalities. And I was like, I wonder, because I had not seen Metallica before this. I had not seen them live. And so I was wondering what they would be like on the big stage. So my wife and I go to Bonnaroo every year. We went and saw them the next night in front of 80,000 people and they were all like, Rawr! you know, it was like all game face. <laughs> they had on the metal persona full on. So it was really fun to see both sides of the band. But you can listen to the record and it's, it's all on there. The jokes are included. <laughs> I mean, as time went on, music became more and more accessible from home. You didn't have to go to a record store. I mean, I mean, now to the point where you just stream it from your phone, you don't even buy anything. So we were like, well, what do we have to do to get people in the store? Well, free live music is something that can't really be replicated in another space. And free show, meet the artist. It's just an amazing experience. People remember those things for the rest of their lives. People still tell me stories about in stores from years ago and how, how wonderful it was. We just kept growing the business and eventually we started to outgrow that space we were in and the building next door became available for rent. So we leased the building next door and we opened Grimey's 2, T-O-O. And so we basically had two storefronts right next door to each other. And we decided to move all the pre-loved music over to the new store. And we also opened a bookstore in there. And we started to, uh, to grow a bookstore business, which, you know, is nice. And now we realize that customers felt even more comfortable because there was more than just music there. You know, it's a cliche sometimes to say, that, uh, you know, the guy wants to go crate digging in the record store and his girlfriend is like, well, what am I going to do? And then she could go to the bookstore, right? Uh, but that's really, that whole cliche is flipped now. I mean, I have probably just as many uh, women and girls shopping here for records as I do guys. It's another great thing about the modern day record store. It's not just dude-centric space <laughs> anymore. So uh, basically, we, we planned to stay where we were. We had the two spaces. And we, you know, we're growing the business and we had wonderful spaces behind the buildings. We could do these outdoor concerts. Um, and we did those for years and years and years. We did Record Store Day out there. I mean, one year for Record Store Day, we had Paramore headlining our bill on the same week that their album was number one in seven countries, including the US, and they could sell out the Bridgestone Arena and they're playing in the back parking lot of Grimey's. It was amazing. We were pretty, pretty pleased with that and with the second building we had a second lot and we even did a festival once with the Nashville scene where we had multiple stages and they fenced the whole thing in behind the two uh, parking lots and you know you could go back and forth and we had bars out there and it was pretty darn cool. But then we lost the Grimey's 2 building. The uh, lady that owned it sold it and the new owners were not interested in tenants is what I was told. <laughs> And then uh, about five days after we moved the last box out of there, they tore the building down. And now it's an enterprise rent-a-car lot. So, progress. Uh, but having lost that store, now we were back to the one storefront, only 2,100 square feet. We were really constrained. Um, so we decided we've got to find another spot. You know, we can't just shrink our business and, and take it. We've got to do something. So we tried really hard to stay in that area. I didn't want to disrupt my customer traffic flow any more than I had to. And there were a couple of really great spaces in that area that we had our eye on. We couldn't afford any of it. 
So we broadened our scope, uh, decided we would look in East Nashville. Originally, we were not even going to look in East Nashville. There are other record stores over here already. I didn't really want to intrude on their market, if you will. But it ultimately ended up being really our only option. And then when we saw this place, and it was affordable, well, we had to take it. <laughs> I was a little worried about blowback from the East Nashville community, thinking we were moving in on their territory or something, but it never happened. Um, plus, Mike and I both have long time roots in East Nashville. I mean, I lived six blocks from here for 12 years. <laughs> Even when I was working over on the other side of town, I was living here. But we really landed on our feet with this space. It's got everything we needed. We got a wonderful performance space. Uh, the old store was not set up well for live performance. It was like an L-shaped room. So we put the band in here and the people who are right in front of the band got a good view. But then if you were all the way coming down this side, pretty much all you saw were the back of people's heads and there was no stage elevating the people. We had Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings in there one time with the full horn section. We squeezed them into our little space and Sharon was about this tall and she uh, asked if there's anything that she could stand on. So I just got her like a you know milk crate turned upside down and uh, the band was getting going, the horns are gonna do their instrumental fanfare or whatever and Sharon just stood up on that crate and all of a sudden her head popped up high enough for people to see and people just went nuts and started screaming and yelling. It was awesome. Um, now we've had so many amazing artists perform at Grimey's over the years. It just truly blows my mind when I think about it. Black Keys, <laughs> Mumford & Sons, Metallica, Avett Brothers, Jason Isbell did a live performance at Grimey's for every solo album he ever released up till this current one because it came out during a pandemic. <laughs> We're open more limited hours. I've got a smaller staff and I'm basically selling as many records as I did before the pandemic. Of course, the mail order has really added to that. That's something we didn't do before. I need more shipping mailers than I've ever bought in my entire life. You know, we ship so many records out now. Um, that's what all of this is, is just LP shipping mailers. And we go through hundreds and hundreds of them a week, uh, which is great, but um, also realizing just how labor intensive mail order is just to make that one sale and get that one record out the door. I mean, you feel it. <laughs> All we had online that you could buy was t-shirts and gift certificates. So we had to pivot pretty quickly when the shutdown came and started getting as many of these records up online as I possibly could. I didn't want to spend any money. So we just you know, stopped buying the new things for a few weeks anyway, because nobody knew what was going to happen. So we just started putting whatever was in the store up online and it worked. People just started buying them. And then we started doing the signed records thing. We started carrying new releases again, especially of Nashville-based artists and getting them to sign the records. And we grew an online business very quickly. And we got to the point where we were generating about half of our regular revenue doing online and curbside only um, uh, until we reopened. And I kind of feel like, why did it take a pandemic to make me realize <laughs> I really have a market to sell records online. We spent 20 years trying to find ways to get people to come in the store and now all of a sudden you couldn't do that anymore, you know? Really changed my thinking. You know, for Grimey's I feel like one of our things is the breadth of selection. You know, we have more ambient, avant-garde, African and Brazilian records than the other shops. You know, you can buy the, the, the more well-known and mainstream classic and indie stuff probably everywhere. But that's one of the things that we offer is, you know, the real depth of selection. This is, you know, the new vinyl section and these in particular are the brand new releases. Today is Friday, that's new release day. Uh, so this is all stuff that's out today. We got the brand new dashboard confessional, uh, brand new reissue, expanded reissue of Bobby Gentry's classic record, the Delta Suite. Um, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. So the regular customers can come in on Fridays and see all the fresh stuff in one go. This one we're particularly proud of, our buddy William Tyler, another local artist made good. He's a fantastic finger-picking guitar player. Most of his stuff is instrumental. Um, and then we display some of the, the fresh ones up there as well. As we go down here, this is the beginning of the alphabet uh, for new vinyl. And this is gonna be uh, basically pop, rock, indie rock, anything that falls more or less into the main you know, rock genre. Um, and just A to Z. So you're gonna have your classic rock. The Beatles are gonna be right in here, you know, uh, with Black Flag or <laughs> the Black Lips or the Black Keys or, or what have you. Also, we've got a hip hop section over here. 
uh, would do uh, pretty well with hip hop. We sell a lot of hip hop vinyl, probably more on the indie tip, but uh, mainstream hip hop as well. We still have some CD displays, although not nearly as many as we used to. Uh, these are the new releases for CDs right here. Um, and then we just have some, you know, featured highlight spotlight stuff. Uh, listening station for checking out uh, records that are either open or pre-loved. Pre-loved is what we call our used stuff. Also here we've got a section that's uh, really important to us at Grimey's and that's the Americana and country section. Obviously we're Nashville, Music City USA. And uh, I would say in the earlier years of Grimey's, we did not sell country music that well, even being in Nashville. We were sort of like, you know, the, the flip side, the indie side of things. And we had chain record stores, we had Tower Records, and they sold lots of country music. And we were sort of like the other stuff that Tower didn't stock so well. But as time has gone on and pretty much all the chains have vanished, leaving uh, nothing but indie stores, we've seen our sales really increase. And then the Americana genre has just taken off in the last 10 years. Artists like Jason Isbell, Sturgill Simpson. Seven Inches are a much smaller audience or, or, or customer base than, uh, than the LPs. It's a very specific kind of record collector, music enthusiast that, that really likes the seven inch. New seven inches just means non-used, if you will, non-pre-loved. Um, so, I mean, I've got everything from a, a fancy Kinks box set, you know, to a Caro Caro Benito, which is a new indie artist that we actually sell pretty well. Um, but also I've got a local section. We've got the Third Man Records label broken down separately. The stage kind of really, still kind of really um, saddens me, I gotta say. We put so much effort into doing live music and in stores at Grimey's. It is really what helped build this entire business and we've got a lot of our reputation from doing all the live shows that we do. Um, artists release a record, they come in and play on release day, the, the, the fans get to be really up close and personal with an artist that they love, they get to meet them and get their record signed. It's, it's an incredible experience that just cannot be replicated online or any sort of virtual reality. It's, uh, it's a real connection, community, human thing. And uh, man, we look forward to them. And, it's so sad that we can't do that right now. Since we can't do these in-store performances, I was mentioning streaming performances uh, that get recorded here to an empty store. But another thing we've been doing is all these artists that are based in Nashville, we've been asking every one of them, will they sign some records for us? Now we didn't do a virtual in-store with Margot Price, but she signed all the records and she continues to sign them. She's like, when you get more, let me know. And we've sold over 500 copies of that record. And then we also have the staff picks. It's a way to get to know the uh, staff of Grimey's. It's kind of a way in. I mean, one of the things about independent uh, record stores is, you know, bonding with the staff that work there. We're all super interested in and curious about music. And we find out about it from our customers. Uh, I would say maybe almost as much as they find out about it from us. So it's a real, you know, two-way exchange. And um, a lot of customers will find an employee that shares tastes and they begin to trust that employee and they're like, what's next? What should I get next? You know, um, like Will here has got uh, a, a real solid following of customers that just take his advice on almost anything. And we all do, but uh, you can go through here and just see what the employee is choosing and maybe can, that helps you get a feel for, you know, which one might share your taste. And we've got here the pre-love new arrivals. This is probably uh, along with the new releases on Friday, this is probably the most shopped, most popular section of the store. People love vintage records. I mean, it's great that you can buy a new reissue, uh, but the more you get into the vinyl game, the more you want to find vintage records. People want to own the one that came out back then. And uh, also, so many of these records are not in print. They're not reissues of them available. If you want that record, you've got to find an, an original. There are people who come in here every single day just to hit the new rivals because they don't want to miss out. And somebody else, like we put out a great collection or something, and somebody else picked it all over. So your, your, your most uh, hardcore customer tends to be for this stuff right here. We've been getting just an incredible influx of buys lately. So um, these are more new arrivals we just tagged yesterday that I don't have room to put out yet. I've got to work some more in, alphabetize them, we'll get those out. This is a buy that's being currently worked on to purchase for the store. Uh, we did several large CD buys. These are all fresh 
brand new but pre-loved CDs and i um, going to have to find a way to make room for those too. It's a great value for, for the music. You get the liner notes, you know, you get a hard copy, you get the art. Um, it's pretty robust format that just doesn't get talked about much anymore. <laughs> As you may have noticed as we walked around, we've got displays of some of the more collectible pre-loved records up on the walls as well, and they're kind of all around the store. Which brings us to this aisle. This is the CD aisle. We've got everything down to basically one aisle now. Um, new CDs in these bins on my left here, and then this is all pre-loved CDs on this side. Local music, something that we really, really really support and champion, but we sell a lot of local music and we will sell any local artist on consignment. There's no bar to be met. Uh, if you make a thing, that's the thing, you gotta make a thing. <laughs> it has to be uh, some kind of tangible format. So it could be a cassette, a CD, um, a seven inch, an LP, 10 inch, an EP, whatever. If you make a physical media format, you can put it in Grimey's on consignment. And if you sell through your stuff, we'll restock it. And if we do that enough times, we'll start buying it outright when I see there's truly demand. Probably our most successful local consignment artist was a group called Civil Wars. You familiar with them? Yeah. That started out as uh, local artist Joy Williams bringing us a box of CDs to sell on consignment. And we just blew through them. And we're like, oh, we gotta get some more of those. And then we blew through them again. And I was like, who are these guys? I mean, <laughs> my business partner, Mike Grimes knows uh, the whole music scene. He also was co-owner of The Basement and The Basement East. And uh, so he was familiar with them, but I mean, I saw firsthand demand for that. And so we started buying them outright and then they signed to a record label and the next thing you know, they're big. Civil Wars gave us a gold record for helping them uh, get off the ground, starting off their career selling records. Pretty awesome. And we did a, uh, a gold record award presentation ceremony in the back parking lot. Uh, of the old Grimies, so um, they gave a little speech, they talked about, you know, um, the success that they were having, they presented us the gold record, and then they met their fans, they sat down at a table and signed autographs and told everybody who wanted to meet them got to meet them. It was pretty cool. All right, this is our uh, little bookstore, Grimies Bookstore. Uh, originally it was called Howlin' Books, I uh, was partnered with my business manager, Jessica Kimbrough. Uh, it was her idea to add the bookstore, something that she had a passion for. Um, but over time, we just ended up taking it over and buying it from her and incorporating it into the Grimey's um, brand, if you will. So we focus primarily on music books, although we carry a full selection of fiction poetry, you know, all kinds of books. We do the most with music books. It's obviously our wheelhouse, if you will. This uh, new book here from uh, Chris France of The Talking Heads is getting a lot of attention right now. Just came out and he, uh, he and his wife, Tina, the rhythm section from Talking Heads, got some uh, David Byrne dirt to dish in there. So people are interested in that. <laughs> I won't dish any dirt on David Byrne. Uh, he's a friend of Grimey's. He, uh, visited us uh, a couple of times a few years ago. He did an in-store appearance uh, where he, uh, he didn't perform, but he came in and signed, and we didn't have any requirements on it. It was so cool. I loved just having it be a thing. It's not necessarily always about forcing somebody to buy something, you know? We just want to create this community space and have people have really memorable experiences. I think that's more valuable to me in the long run than how many records I sold at one particular event. Um, but then, after knowing about us and being in the shop, when he uh, toured Nashville the next time, uh, he just came by and hung out with us. We happened to have an in-store going on, and I can't even remember right now. It wasn't any, any big act, probably a local act. But he came in and we had free beers for our in-store, so we asked him if he wanted a beer. He cracked open a PBR and stood there and watched the band with us, just like anybody else. It's pretty cool. <laughs> But another thing that we've been doing here is in-store events with authors. We've done a bunch of them now too. Randy Fox, uh, local uh, music journalist, wrote this excellent book on Excello Records, a blues label that was based in Nashville. Um, very, very sought after recordings on Excello, uh, Slim Harpo, all kinds of, Lightning Slim, 
um, all kinds of great artists recorded for that label. So when Randy released his book, we had him come in. We've got a display here that focuses a little bit more on Americana, very important style of music here in Nashville, Tennessee. Certainly some of the best-selling records we have you would classify as Americana. This is sort of the wall of sound, <laughs> we call it. And these are all music books, but uh, pretty much everything here is music. Alphabetized by artist. It's pretty well curated. That's probably the biggest compliment I get about the bookstore is, is how well curated it is. It's not huge. We don't have everything, but everywhere you look, there's something interesting. Jason uh, Bennett is the manager of the bookstore. Uh, we all have special specialized areas, I guess, if you will, from buyers for, uh, for music, the buyers who, buy, who pick the records that we uh, choose to stock, to the used buyers who buy all the collections. It's a bookstore, so what, what kind of records are going to appeal to book people, <laughs> right? Like, I guess we'll put the folk down there, you know? <laughs> uh, but no, we pretty quickly came around to the idea of we got to put some of the primary genres down there just to make sure and draw people down. Or if somebody just asks, do you have metal records? Uh, they might not have asked what's downstairs or even known there's a downstairs. So um, yeah, bringing the metal down here definitely did the trick. It's one of our most shopped genres uh, um, in the store by far. Uh, we sell a lot of jazz records too. Jazz is another interesting trend to watch come back. Like so many of the indie rock fans also are into jazz. I guess they're just, you know, they're really interested in music and exploring it. Another former employee of ours, uh, Ryan Norris, has a group called Coupler, and they've released a record on Third Man Records, and they've, uh, they do ambient music. They've done a lot of tours where they play in movie theaters, showing old silent films, and they create a live soundtrack in the moment as the film plays. Pretty cool stuff. And then electronic music too, which is also a very big genre these days. So those are the, the additional genres that are down here, along with soundtracks. And we've got a small, you know, comedy section, spoken word, that kind of thing. The soundtracks are a, a genre in their own right now, and uh, one that has only grown in popularity. I do think that the pandemic has obviously changed almost every facet of our daily life. But I see demand for these wonderful, affordable art pieces. That's what vinyl record is. I see the demand is higher now, I think, than even before the pandemic. Now that we've toured the most popular shop in the city, we are headed to the longest running. Phonolux has been in business through five decades. Well, personally, I've been collecting records since I was about 12. I got interested in buying records and it really started to um, increase my interest when I left school, which is 1971. I was always fascinated with American music especially. Personally, like 40s, 50s, blues, R&B, rock and roll, that kind of music. But the core of what I like personally is 50s and 60s. So uh, you were asking how I got into this. Well, like everybody else, you know, I started to accumulate records that uh, this is back in England that I didn't want, but were of some interest to other collectors. So I'd sell those to try and buy more records that I liked. It's very much the same. I think everybody's got a similar story, really. Their personal interests lapped over into business interests, really. Tomorrow, as I told you earlier, is the 33rd anniversary. It started the 1st of August in 87. We opened the doors. I had the building a little bit before that. I got into the building about February and had to do quite a lot of renovations just to get started. And uh, started with just this side of the store and we were selling records exclusively then. And then CDs came along, I suppose, what, about 89? And I was actually interviewed then and they asked me, well, listen, <laughs> <laughs> the gods don't like CDs. <laughs> yeah, the very mention of it. <laughs> now, some, I was interviewed for the television. They said, how long before CDs eclipse records in popularity? And I said, oh, it's going to take a while, you know, uh, at least five years or something like that, I would have thought. But actually, I was totally wrong. You know, within 18 months, the, the records had been moved down there and um, the CDs uh, were of more interest to everybody. So that's why the aisles, I told you earlier, are very narrow down there because when I was parking the records down there, I didn't want to get rid of them because I personally love records and, you know, I just put, I made the aisles kind of narrower than I might have done if records had been, you know, the same level of interest there is now. But uh, there was hardly anybody looking at records. You've seen my ad, you know, I think this is from 90 or 91, where I was reassuring the public that I still did buy and sell records. 
and there were some people who still wanted them, but nothing like it is today, of course. But the, and you know, the public, by and large, had been assured by the record companies that records were you know, just basically landfill anymore. And uh, most people bought that line, I think, and uh, a lot of records got slung out then. I think that I think a lot of records actually. Uh, didn't make it past the early 90s. They were either thrown away, sold, given away, because people saw them just take, basically taking up uh, space in their houses. I saw it coming, and it, it was obvious that so the technology was going to completely change the dynamic of all this, which it did, and it still has. I think records are the audiophile's choice now. I think that's probably established, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There was that period between late 90s and early 2000, I mean, where the whole thing was in freefall and that one didn't know when and if it was going to uh, bottom out. It, my, my sister sent me a book actually and from England, you might be familiar with it, called Last Store Standing. And it was a guy who was doing a critique of all the record stores in England. Like, I think my sister sent it to me for Christmas, so it kind of gives you an idea of her. <laughs> how she regarded me at the time. I'm only joking, but it was called Last Door Standing. And it was this guy who was going around and it was like the relics of the retail music business. And that was when it was really in the tank and people were starting to um, write it off, basically. It started to tick up a bit, I suppose, maybe about 2000 and three, I'd imagine, something like that. People like it, it's, it it's, it's communal in that respect. You can sit around and listen to a record. You know, most people aren't gonna sit and around and listen to a download or so much, are they? I don't think. You know, there's something about records and just the tactile nature of them. You can look at them, you can read the liner notes. I like records, I'll be quite honestly, I sometimes just like to put a 45 on the turntable and watch it spin round, you know, the label and stuff. It's something hypnotic about it really, isn't it? Let me give you a tour of this shop here. Obviously being in Nashville, we've got a lot of country music. So country music CDs, you know, runs the entire length of the wall here. Pretty much everything on this side is all CDs, CDs and DVDs and CD box sets along the wall, which they're getting to be a harder thing to find now. We still do quite a bit of uh, business with CDs. And uh, we, I think we have one of the larger selections in town. Back behind the counter, we have a lot of more of the collectible CDs. So it'll be a lot of like audiophile copies, a lot of Japanese pressings, a lot of things that are maybe out of print. You know, that's a little harder to find nowadays. And over here, we got a few of our cassettes, R&B cassettes. Cassette business has really picked up. Definitely in the past two years, it's really picked up considerably. And we have a lot more in the lower room as well. We have two big racks of cassettes that kind of spin around. And also we have a ton of understock down here. That's just, people just come in and just start digging for tapes every week. We have a lot of people that collect tapes now and they've really come back in the past couple of years. This is the vinyl room. And I think, once again, I think we have one of the larger selections in town of vinyl records. We kind of, we kind of specialize a little more towards the collectible, collectible records in that we kind of have a dedicated section to collectible records. The way we describe it, it's just really nice, clean copies. And uh, we have a lot, a lot of our customers base is really, they want good, nice, clean copies and they don't want to run all over town looking for them. So, you know, they would kind of come here and they know they want to go to that section and find them. And, and with that too, we also, we do carry uh, a lot of new releases you'll see the signage of the different sections. It is handmade signs. We make all of our own signage in-house. One of our employees is, is uh, used to be a sign maker, so he makes all the, the signage and everything. So we've got an R&B selection, which kind of wraps around here, a wrap section right here. And we have a large jazz section, which is here. We have one of the larger jazz sections in, in Nashville. And uh, we kind of pride ourselves on the jazz, the jazz selection. Uh, and down here, you'll see more of the, kind of the odd sections, the easy listening, male, female vocals, uh, gospel, 50s, 60s, oldies, Elvis. Being in Nashville, get a ton of country records coming through and um, get a lot of tourists in that specifically want to buy a record from Nashville. So we, we do see a lot of business from that. Up here is our wall of fame, so to speak, the wall of sound that it's more of our titles that are like $50 and up, like um, This Wilden Urban, which is like a $300 record. 
and you'll, you'll see a lot of those that'll be just featured along the wall. And, um, you know, usually a lot of the collectors come to this place first, the real, the serious collectors. They're wanting that rare title, super collectible, but super nice copy. In this section, we have uh, reggae, we have Exotica, the Cheesecake Records, which are always great, just a lot of great covers. Um, people, people love to buy some of these and just kind of frame them for decoration, but great music. Also, we have soundtracks, which runs the rest of the row here. And um, behind that is, you know, the collectible section. We have a lot of regular customers. And, and some of them just, they don't wanna look through every record every time they come in. So they'll come and they'll hit our new arrival bins. We have one here, two bins here. The newest arrivals, which are stuff that, this is stuff that we just put out today. We put new product out every Friday. And we do get a, um, a decent selection of uh, new and used audio equipment um, from, you know, vintage turntables to um, vintage receivers. You see the Marantz here. And, um, and then they also the new, we have some of the Audio Technica. And it's, it seems like recently, man, there's still been a, uh, a, good, a lot of people coming in that are just now getting into records. And, and I think that's a good indicator that the vinyl, vinyl sales are not dying off, they're increasing because people are still buying new record players. And um, I think that's, that's a good indication that, that there's still gonna continue to be good sales for, for the records. He's never really advertised yeah. much. He just likes it to be for people to find it because he's really doing it essentially just out of the love for music as opposed to anything. That was the whole reason for doing it. The funniest one in some ways was when a guy drove into um, through the window there, completely smashed the, the windows up the store up there with glass and records and everything all over the place. And uh, actually, the, it was the bank of the LPs that stopped him, his car. After things had settled down, the, the one thing he wanted to know is if I think if I had any Marvin Gaye CDs. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, here I was knee deep in debris, and this guy's, you know. So that's always, you know, we recount that as a, a, a as a story. But you know, there's loads and loads. I mean, in this business, it does, you know, attract people who are sometimes eccentric, really. I suppose, and I might be one of them. So we could have stayed and listened to his stories for hours, but we now need to head over to our next shop, Allison's. Allison's is a small curated shop which also features a hi-fi store. Now we're headed to Hendersonville, Tennessee, to a tattoo studio. Today we're in Hendersonville, Tennessee at Life Alter Inc. Social Club in Elevator Vinyl, and we're gonna take a spin around inside, stay tuned. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Elevator Vinyl here in Hendersonville, Tennessee. A little bit of history about me and the shop. I got into music real early. I played music and uh, my private teacher, she was in college, and so she was into a lot of great bands that I had never heard of, and she was slipping me Depeche Mode and Cure tapes when all my friends were listening to Prince and Michael Jackson, and they thought I was weird for listening to this different kind of music, but gradually I started going to record stores and buying records, and then that snowballed into my dad saying, I wish you'd make some money with all these records you keep buying. So I said, okay, fine, I can do that. And so I started DJing. So that was back in early 90s and just DJed ever since, still DJing today. So really the store came from the fact that I had way too many records in my house and I needed a place to liquidate a few of them. So that's really how the store started. Uh, we just celebrated our two year anniversary and uh, we are in with a tattoo shop, which uh, is actually my brother. He's a tattoo artist very accomplished, huge clientele. The name of the tattoo shop is Life Alter Inc. Tattoo. Life Alter Inc. Social Club. And that's owned by my brother, and he's actually doing a tattoo right now, so why don't we go over and check it out. Uh, 
Uh, and he'd always had this idea that we would open up a shop together. I never liked the idea. I've always heard you never go into business with family, but he's cool enough and we've managed to make it without any issues over the past two years. So on the other side of the shop is where they do the tattoos and then I do the records. And I feel like there's a marketing slogan in there somewhere where you need needles for both things somehow, but I haven't figured out how to word it yet, but that's how we ended up in here with the tattoo shop. So yeah, the name gets quite a few questions. People don't really get the connection and to be honest, it's a really distant connection, so hang with me for a bit while I try to explain all this. So when I started DJing here, I was playing with a group of guys. We had a little collective and crew here in town that was DJing a lot before us. We got wind of them saying that all the music they play, it's like elevator music. And so we were like, okay, well, we'll call ourselves the Elevator Music Collective. The Elevator Vinyl name sort of comes from that. So we came up with this logo to kind of tie everything in and try to make elevators and vinyl a cohesive thing. So when you come into the shop, best place to start is New Arrivals. That's where all of our newly priced, new and used stuff will go first. So if you're a regular customer of the shop, you don't necessarily have to look through all the bins, you can kind of just come here and see what's new. Although I have been known to maybe hide some gems throughout the rest of the alphabet, just to reward those that do look. So it's not a 100% given that you'll find all the new stuff in the new arrivals, but it's a pretty good chance. But like I said, I have been known to hide some goodies in the rest of the alphabet. So the way we have things kind of organized, I, uh, I've worked in music retail all my life. At Tower Records, they basically categorized everything as pop, rock, and soul for the most part. Obviously, some genres are separate, but uh, sometimes the lines are so blurred, it's hard to tell. Is that pop? Is that rock? Is it punk? Is it new wave? What is it? You know, so it's just better to just, I lump it all together. It's all under the alphabet, and it should be alphabetized within the letter. So we try to make things as easy as possible to find. As I said, we do separate certain genres just because it's obviously not pop, rock, or soul. So here we've got our jazz section, uh, also soundtracks. It's a fantastic genre that I never really personally got into, but so many people love soundtracks. And so it's really kind of become a favorite of mine recently too. Uh, then we also have uh, what I like to call heavy hair metal rock. It's my own little genre I made up. I've been told that metalheads take offense maybe if you try to make fun of their genres, but I'm not making fun of it, I promise. All I'm doing is combining it all into one fantastic genre called heavy hair metal rock. And then my favorite section, the industrial synth pop section. I love bands like uh, Depeche Mode and New Order and Kraftwerk and Erasure and Knights of Reb and Front 242 and all the Wax Tracks bands. So I separate them in here. So that kind of makes us a little bit separate from a lot of other stores because most stores you go into, you're not going to find this stuff. But after DJing for almost 30 years, and this being my favorite genre, I have tons of it. So the genres kind of wind around. Pop, rock, and soul continues all the way over to here, uh, A through Z. And then of course on the wall are our titles we like to uh, highlight, maybe a little more difficult to find or uh, in extra demand. And then down under here, as you can read on the sign, it says, Patience, Young Grasshopper. Nothing to see here, not for sale yet. Which means this is all new stuff that we've gotten in recently, still has to be processed. As Soon as I get a chance to go through that, pull the best stuff, I'll get it priced and it'll end up in the new arrival section. Best place to see our new arrivals, if you follow us on Instagram, every night at seven o'clock, I post the 10 at seven. And what that is, is it's 10 photos of newly arrived records that are available for sale. So when the pandemic hit and closed our shop, nobody could come and browse. So I came up with the idea that since they can't come to the store, I'm gonna bring the store to them. So I decided to post 10 records every night at seven and people claim them in the comments and pay with Venmo and I ship them out for free. So it's been the one thing that's kept me afloat during these pretty tough times. So huge thanks to all our Instagram followers that have been so absolutely generous and kind and kept me in business. <laughs> Can't have a record store without a listening station just because majority of the records are used and a lot of them are visually graded. So if it's something that you're interested in purchasing, we certainly want you to 
put it on the turntable, take a listen to it, test it out, make sure that it's up to your personal standards. Everybody's grading standards are very different. So what might be near mint to me is certainly not near mint to you. And so anyway, we always have the listening station here for people to check out anything that they're potentially interested in buying. So, I mean, when I first started DJing, it was a lot of house music, a lot of techno coming out of Detroit, uh, Germany, UK, like that was what I loved. And uh, so, needless to say, I have a huge collection of it. And a lot of stores, especially here in Nashville, tend to shy away from those genres. That's just, that's a good way of putting it, I think. And it's fantastic for me because I can come in and I can get great records for a really low price because none of the people in town, few of the people at the stores know anything about those genres. So uh, I like to think that we tend to maybe specialize a little bit in it, that uh, certainly have a much bigger selection than I think any other store in town. And I'm not bragging, it's just kind of a fact of life. So I love the fact that uh, we're kind of the store in town that the other stores send customers to when they're looking for more of the house electronic uh, techno sort of genres. We had a wild time at Elevator Vinyl, but now we're headed downtown to the main strip of the country music capital of the world. We are not quite sure what to expect as the city is still on lockdown. They closed on us. What? So we're here at Ernest Tubb in downtown Nashville, and unfortunately, we're not going to be taking a spin around because they closed on us. We hope you enjoyed this tour of almost every record shop in Nashville and the surrounding areas. Remember to support these local shops next time you're in town. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and stick around for a preview of Season 2, Chicago.